we want to solve the given initial value problem using the technique of separation of variables. We have dy dx equals x y squared plus two y squared and y of zero is equal to one. So because we have this initial condition, we're going to be able to find the particular solution rather than just the general solution to this differential equation. And because we're going to be using separation of variables, we're going to write this equation here in a form where we have a function of y times dy on one side of the equation and a function of x times dx on the other. So to get started here, what we're going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by dx or write this in differential form and also factor the right side of the equation. Notice how these two terms have a common factor of y squared. So we would have dy equals, again we're going to factor this, so we'll have y squared times the quantity x plus two times dx. Now we've made some progress. x plus two is a function of x times dx, but we still have this y squared here. So now we're going to divide both sides of the equation by y squared. This will simplify to one. And then on the left side, instead of leaving it in this form, we're going to move this up into the numerator so we can write this as y to the negative two dy equals the quantity x plus two times dx. Now it's in the correct form so we can integrate both sides of the equation and hopefully solve this for y. So we're going to integrate the left and integrate the right. Here we'll apply the power rule, so we'll add one to negative two, that'll be y to the negative one divided by negative one. We do have a constant of integration here, but we'll also have one on the right, so let's go ahead and just include it on the right side. So the integral of the quantity x plus two with respect to x would be x squared divided by two plus two x plus our constant of integration. And now our goal is to solve this equation for y. So what we'll do here is move this down to the denominator. So we'll have one over negative one times y, or just negative one over y equals x squared over two plus two x plus c. Let's continue working with this on the next slide. And I'm going to go ahead and put these terms here over one because what we'll do next is add these together by obtaining a common denominator. So I'll multiply this by two over two and this by two over two. So we're going to have negative one divided by y is equal to, again we have a common denominator now of two. So we'll have x squared plus four x plus two c. Now the reason I wanted to do this is, if these two fractions are equal to each other, then the reciprocals must also be equal. That means y over negative one, or just negative y, must equal two divided by x squared plus four x plus two c. And now we can just multiply both sides of the equation by negative one, giving us our general solution of y equals Let's go ahead and make the numerator negative, so negative two all over x squared plus four x plus two c. Now I could replace two c with c sub one or c sub two. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in this form though because remember now we actually want to find the value of c to find the particular solution and solve this initial value problem. So if y of zero is equal to one, that means we can go ahead and replace x with zero and know this function must equal one. So that would give us negative two divided by, this would be zero squared plus four times zero plus two c must equal positive one. Well this is zero and this is zero. This is going to simplify to negative two over two c must equal positive one, again by the initial condition, and therefore c must equal negative one. So if c equals negative one, we now have our particular solution for this initial value problem. We know that y must equal negative two divided by the quantity x squared 
plus 4x. And then again, if c is negative 1, this would be plus negative 2 or minus 2. This would be our solution to the initial value problem. Now let's finish by taking a look at this graphically. If we were to graph this differential equation, it would produce the following red slope field, where each segment represents the slope of the tangent line to a function in the family of solutions to this differential equation. But if we know y of zero equals one, that means our solution must contain this point here, and therefore this blue function is our particular solution, which is the solution to our initial value problem. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.